How's it going guys? I'm Theo Cho, and you might have read in the news in the past couple of weeks that there has been a big, big exploit discovered in pretty much all CPUs and it's being called Meltdown or Spectre because those are basically two sides of the same coin. They're a little bit different and I will explain them. But the really important thing to know is that this is a huge deal and it affects pretty much every single modern CPU, Intel, AMD, ARM, even smartphones. So we're gonna go over basically what it is. I'm gonna try to explain it in a way that's relatively easy to understand why it's a big deal in more detail, and then more specifically what you can do to make sure that you are at the least risk possible, and then we can talk about the future as well. So why don't we talk about how it works? Now, first of all, you're gonna have to understand two things about how CPUs work. First of all, they use one type of thing called out of order execution, which basically means that even if commands and operations are delivered to the CPU, it might not execute them in that order. It might rearrange them to be more efficient. And another process it uses is called speculative execution, which means that the CPU will try to predict what the computer wants it to do next and then do that ahead of time, even though it might not ne necessarily be what you want it to do. So it does things and it might be wrong, but theoretically it would roll back those commands if it was wrong and it's not a big deal. But the simplified version of this, and you can probably understand how this exploit is going to work, is that the CPU basically sometimes fetches data and does things when you didn't tell it to. Like I said, most of the time this is fine because it does keep things secure theoretically and it doesn't let things get out of hand and it rolls it all back. But these exploits, the Spectre and Meltdown exploits, do take advantage of this. They found a way to basically trick the CPU into fetching data that it wants specifically, and then also tricks it into getting it out of that secure area so it can actually read it. So it's kind of like a two-step thing. First of all, the program or virus will do some things to kind of nudge the CPU in a direction that makes it more likely that it will try to do a speculative execution of some special data that you want, like a password or something, where it might not have tried to get that before. But even if it does get that execution, it's still in that secure area. But using that out of order execution property that CPUs do, in simplified terms, the virus will do some things where the CPU will basically spit out that information and get it in a place where it is accessible before the actual check runs on that process, the security check to say, wait a minute, is this supposed to be allowed here? So it was run out of order in a way where the bad thing happened before the security check was able to do its job. But you might be wondering, all right, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is that memory isolation, where you can keep things in a secure area in the memory and not let anything else access it, is a keystone of computer security. I mean, it is absolutely essential. So when you have something like this, where certain programs can access data it's not supposed to, I mean, what more basic vulnerability can you get? So this is pretty much a worst case scenario. I mean, if you look at what a virus wants to do, its whole purpose is to get information that it's not supposed to. Sometimes it'll do things it's not supposed to, obviously, but getting any information it wants is equally as bad, and this is what it does. It allows something to exploit the CPU where it can get any type of secure information. And not only can it gather information from other applications, but also the operating system itself, which we will get into in a little bit. But you can imagine if you have a low level running program that can access your password manager, for example, that would be very bad. Now there are security patches that are being released that can mitigate this, but it will result in a CPU hit because remember, they do all these things in the CPU to increase performance. So if you don't have that available to you anymore, now the CPU isn't gonna do as well. So to really fix this in the long term, it's going to literally require redesigning CPUs at the hardware level. So we might not see a 100% fix for this until a year from now or so. And another reason this is a huge deal is because it's not software based, it's based on the fundamental architecture of the CPU at a hardware level. So it can be used on anything from Windows to Linux to OS X. So if a virus is put on a web page or something that uses this vulnerability, it doesn't matter who visits it, it's still gonna get you. And don't forget that not only do home users use computers with these CPUs, also servers. I mean, how 
how much data is stored on Amazon servers, Google Cloud servers, every website. I mean, this is truly a catastrophe. It's pretty bad. Luckily, we are seeing these patches though, but they're not perfect. Now, as for how this has to do with the naming system, Meltdown and Spectre, Spectre is basically the umbrella term for this kind of exploit where a program is able to access things that it's not supposed to, but Meltdown is a more specific case where a program is able to access the kernel of the operating system, literally the operating system itself, which has some of the most secure information that you would not want to reveal. So this part of the memory is gonna have extremely important information like passwords, like login passwords, encryption keys. If you have an encryption on your whole hard drive, this could theoretically get access to that. I mean, anything that is top security is now possibly revealed to that virus. And Meltdown is really the biggest deal in here because unlike the general Spectre exploits, this one is really easy to implement relatively because with Spectre, if you're trying to do this with a different program, I don't know, say you wanna have a virus that infects Adobe Photoshop for some reason, you would have to specifically code that virus to do things to Adobe Photoshop. So you have to tailor it to a specific program to get it to do those things with the speculative execution. It's not very easy, but when it comes to the operating system, a lot of the operating systems use the same type of execution for the kernel and it stores it in the same way. So you don't really have to figure out much. You could do one virus that affects all operating systems. You don't have to specially code anything for individual programs. It literally can access the most secure information most easily. Therefore, it's not exactly a surprise that they call this Meltdown. It really does fit the name. Although it is kind of ironic because the most severe case of this, Meltdown, is also the easiest to fix through a software patch. So if you are updating your operating systems, you should be fine, although Spectre is another story. Again, I keep saying we'll move on to that later, but we will. And actually, why don't we talk about that now? We could talk about what you should do. And like I said, this is gonna affect pretty much every single device using a modern CPU, although most operating system manufacturers and computer manufacturers have been releasing updates if they haven't already. Specifically, there have been patches released for Windows, Linux, OS X, iOS, and Android. So pretty much most people should be covered here, at least for the Spectre thing. So for iOS, you're gonna need 11.2.2 version operating system. If you're updated past that, you're fine. For Android, you're gonna need the January security patch release. If you have an older phone that has a manufacturer that doesn't really release updates that often for Android, which can be a problem, then that is a big issue and you should probably take that up with your phone manufacturer. If you're using a Mac with OS X, if you have 10.13.2, that's the latest patch that will also patch this issue. And as for Windows, they did release a patch last week, so if you are all up to date on Windows with your patches, then you should be good as well. So just check for updates, update it, and then you'll be fine. However, you need to be aware that you might need to do more later. You might not be 100% protected because some of the vulnerability, especially for Spectre, will actually require a BIOS update. It needs to update the firmware of your CPU pretty much. So there is a software called Inspector. It's made by Gibson Research. They're a legit company. They've been around for a while. So you can run that and I'll put a link in the description and it will tell you how secure you are and what vulnerabilities you have. And you can see here, I'm protected against Meltdown, but I'm not protected against Spectre. And Asus has not released a BIOS update for my motherboard. So I'm kind of upset about that. I don't know what's taking them so long. They say they will for X99 boards, but it's good to know that, look, I need to keep an eye out for these BIOS updates and do it as soon as I get the chance. Most of the big manufacturers should do something about it if it's a relatively new motherboard, but if they're not, I mean, literally the only thing you can do is get a new motherboard or a new CPU, it kind of sucks. In the meantime though, even if you aren't protected 100%, you can get mostly secure with these patches, obviously. And also you can secure individual programs like for example, Google Chrome and Firefox and Safari, they're all releasing patches to protect against it. For example, Chrome is releasing version 64 and that will be released next week. It should protect against that, but 
between now and then, you can actually go into the Chrome Flags menu by going to Chrome colon slash slash flags. And if you enable site isolation, then that should protect you if you're using Google Chrome. If you're using Firefox, they released version 57, which does protect against these exploits and Safari 11.0.2 does as well. So if you are keeping all of your software up to date, all of your operating systems up to date, you should be fine for the most part. The only thing is those BIOS updates, you need to keep an eye on them and download them off the manufacturer's website as soon as you can. If you're not sure how to update the BIOS, be careful because if you screw it up too bad, then you could brick your computer theoretically. So. You might wanna ask someone who knows what they're doing, maybe take it to a computer shop or something and have them do it, but not a bad idea to at least keep an eye out on that. But now you might be wondering, well, now what? What are we gonna do? We have all these CPUs that are really vulnerable. I mean, how is this gonna affect the future? Well, the first thing is that we're probably gonna see CPU performance hits. Newer CPUs apparently aren't affected as much. For example, maybe single digit decreases in performance, but for something like a Haswell CPU like mine, apparently I might see a significant decrease in, in performance, which really sucks. But I mean, it's better than literally having your whole computer open to a virus. So if you do notice a hit in performance on your computer, that could be why, and just know that, well, it probably is just to secure your computer, and it has to do with removing a performance feature from your CPU, basically. At the end of the day, the only 100% true fix is gonna be to literally get a new CPU when they come out without this exploit in them. So we might have to wait a while because, I mean, imagine this, we have this type of attack. It's a completely new type of attack we haven't seen before. So there might be other ways that could be similar. And then it's just going to be a matter of the operating systems having to patch again and again and again. And until there is a completely new CPU architecture design that doesn't have any of these issues, then you have to keep an eye on those updates. So hopefully this doesn't scare you guys too much, but it is a big deal. So if you weren't sure how this whole thing worked before, hopefully you do now and understand why it was a big deal. But either way, you can let me know down in the comments, have, has your motherboard manufacturer released an update or not? I don't know. But if you wanna keep watching, I've got some other videos right here, you can just click on those. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, should be worth it. And also be sure to enable notifications or else YouTube might not even show you new videos even if you do subscribe. In any case, I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.